Hi everyone, we are in the last page on our probability unit packet and we are going to talk about probability word problems today. So we've basically covered all of the different concepts that you need to know in order to solve these word problems. So we're going to go through and this will be a nice review of all of those things we've talked about. So number one says, as prizes in a bingo game, your teacher puts six coupons for free homework and eight coupons for get two free points on your test in a bag. As a bingo winner, you get to draw a coupon from the bag without looking. What is the probability that you will draw a free homework coupon? So the first thing we have to do is figure out how many total coupons are in the bag. So we know that there's six free homework coupons and eight coupons that are get two free points on your test. So six plus eight gives us a total of 14 coupons in the bag. So the probability of getting a free homework would be 6 out of 14. There's 6 free homework coupons. And we could reduce that, divide both the numerator and the denominator by 2, and we get a probability of 3 sevenths. Number 2, examine the spinner at the right. What is the probability that the spinner will land in the white region? You may assume that the pointer is attached at the center of the spinner. Notice the marking for the right angle, 90 degrees. So the reason they're telling us that that is a right angle is to show that um, if we wanted to, we could split our red section into two. And so now looking at the spinner, we can see that there's four equal sections. So the white part would be one fourth of our circle. Number three, Camilla has a bag of 40 colored bingo markers. 15 of the markers are red, 12 are blue, 8 are yellow, and the rest are white. When she takes the first marker from the bag, what is the probability that the marker is blue? So we already know that there are 40 total markers, markers in the bag, and so we have to look and see how many of those 40 are blue. And we can see from right here, 12 out of 40 are blue, and I can reduce that by four to give me three tenths. Part B, since Camilla is placing the markers on her bingo card, she is not putting the markers back in the bag. When she takes a second marker from the bag, what is the probability that the marker is yellow? So this is when we talked about without replacement, how if you take something and you don't put it back and then you pick again, what happens is your total number of whatever it is changes. So in this case, she's taken a marker, she didn't put it back, and now she's picking again. And so instead of our total markers being 40, now it's only 39 because she never put the first one back. So the probability that she gets a yellow marker, if we look, there's eight yellow in the bag, would be eight out of 39 instead of 40. And we can't reduce that, so that's our final answer. Part C, Camilla reaches in the bag a third time and draws a white marker. What is the probability of drawing another white marker on her fourth draw? Okay, so we have to think about this. We already have two markers that were taken out of the bag. Now she's taken a third marker out and it's white. So we're already down to 38 total markers in the bag. And if she's now going to select another marker, a fourth marker, we're down to 37 to choose from. And so currently there are, let's, let's see here, it says 15 are red, 12 are blue, and 8 are yellow. The rest are white. So we need to first figure out how many white were in the bag. So let's see, if I add 15 plus 12, that's 27. 27 plus the 8 yellow is 35. So if there were 40 total, that means there must be 5 that are white. Now, it says that she drew a white marker on that third draw. So technically, the probability before would have been 5 out of 38 because there was 5 white markers out of the 38 that were in there. But now, if she's hanging on to that white marker, there's only four left in the bag out of 37. 
And so that's the chance that she gets another white marker on the fourth draw. Okay, number four. At Halloween, Mrs. Carson puts out three bags of goodies from which you may choose your treat, as shown below. Each bag contains a different selection of goodies. From which bag should you ask Mrs. Carson to pick your treat if you are hoping to get a caramel apple? That is, which bag offers the best probability of getting what you want? Assume Mrs. Carson is equally likely to choose any one of the treats. Okay, so if we look at the cat bag, I can see that there are five caramel apples in that bag, which is what I want. So my probability is going to be five out of the total number of treats in that bag, which is 15. The probability of getting a caramel apple from the cat bag is one third. In the pumpkin bag, I can see there are four caramel apples. So four out of the total number of treats in that bag, which is 12, also gives us a probability of one third third of a chance of getting a caramel apple from the pumpkin bag. And then for the witch hat bag, it looks like we have all equally likely outcomes here. So six out of, that would be 18, which also equals a third. So you're actually equally likely to choose a caramel apple from any bag. So it really doesn't matter which bag you choose from, it's the same probability. So we're gonna write we are equally likely to draw a caramel apple from any bag. Okay, let's go to number five. On a recent trip to the zoo, Chloe's bracelet was snatched by a curious monkey. Unfortunately, she has no idea which monkey took the bracelet, as they were all equally curious. The picture at the right illustrates Chloe's situation and all of the monkeys involved. What is the probability that the monkey hanging from the tree took her bracelet? Okay, so the first thing we need to figure out is how many monkeys are in this picture. And you can see I kind of label them on here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so the number of monkeys actually hanging from the tree is only one. So the chance that that is the monkey that took the bracelet would be one seventh. What is the probability that the monkey hanging from the tree did not take her bracelet? So if you remember, we call this the complement. So if we're asking in part A, which of the monkeys hanging from the tree took the bracelet and it's one seventh, the opposite or the complement would be six sevenths. Remember, that's like saying 1 minus 1 7. What's left? 6 7. Number 6. The bakers at the confectioner's cafe are attempting to make the world's largest piece of ribbon candy. If they succeed in this feat, one of the bakers chosen at random will travel to New York City for a television appearance. Assuming they are successful, part A, what is the probability that the baker making the TV appearance will have a mustache? Okay, so first things first, we have to figure out how many bakers we're talking about. So let's count them up. Nine total bakers. And so out of the nine, I need to figure out how many have a mustache. One, two, three, four, five, six is what I'm counting, which would reduce to two thirds. Okay, for B, what is the probability that the winning baker may be one of the bakers in this illustration holding a spatula? So we have one, two, three, four bakers holding spatulas. So four out of nine. And what is the probability that the TV baker may be one of the bakers in this illustration with a mustache and holding a spatula? So now we have to make sure that it has both things. So a mustache with a spatula. I am counting one, two, three. Three out of nine, or one third. Okay, 
Okay, and the last question, what is the probability that the baker chosen to appear on TV is frowning in this illustration? And it looks like there is only one sad baker in the top left corner, so one out of nine. Okay guys, so that's the end of the probability unit. Um, the next videos I would like you to start watching are from the statistics unit. And so you can go back to my page and you can start working through those.